So John Pavlovitz says this in, uh, in his book, If God is love, don't be a jerk, page 95. It doesn't matter how much phobic Christians sincerely believe they're loving sinners. If they ignore the, pl- the, pa- the pain expressed to them by LGBTQ human beings, and it doesn't matter if they tell themselves that they're just confronting immoral behavior in the name of God, if the methods they use inflict greater injury. Now let's pause for a moment and reflect that John Pavlovitz doesn't care that he just called Christians phobic and horrible people, and that he inflicted injury and pain upon them, and that's going to be because there's a major inconsistency in progressive Christians, which is privileging certain people over others. But they argue against privilege, but it's all privilege focused, I think. Um, but this is the view. It's like, hey, look, if you're hurting them, you've got to be wrong. And so all we need is for people to say, hey, look, you're hurting me. So you have to change your theology. This, I'm going to coin a, a, a term here. I mean, I'm sure someone has said it somewhere, but we'll call it storytelling as truth making. Storytelling as truth making. So, like, let's say we hear a story about a gay man who felt outcast, depressed, suicidal, until finding love and acceptance in a progressive Christian community that finally embraced him and his partner as they are. And now he's joyful, and now he's happy, and now he serves in the church. That story is meant to tell you that you guys have to have this wrong. Because, look, this man is very happy and satisfied now. But when he was doing things the way you say, he was very depressed and suicidal and unhappy. His story, his story of satisfaction proves you're wrong. Now, you realize this is a different way of doing theology, right? You're you're used to maybe opening your Bible and going, well, it seems pretty clear. Here, instead, we're going to say, hold on, slow down. Nobody really knows what that means. (laughs) We're going to listen to the stories of these real people. Aren't you supposed to love people? And so you feel that this draws, plus it feels nice, man. Like, and that's, I'm not trying to deride it. I'm trying to understand the attraction. It feels very nice. Look, I have a, a desire for catharsis that is me getting along with everybody. And this feels good. This, I, that would draw me towards progressive Christian stuff. So there's a problem of counter stories. Uh, so you get stories of people who say, hey, I'm like, I was in the, the, the homosexual lifestyle. I thought I was happy, but I came out. And now I'm fulfilled and joyous in a new way that I never knew before in Christ. Those kind of counter stories are really a problem because if storytelling is truth making, How do you pick which story to believe? And so progressive Christians are forced to say, well, either good for you, right? Hey, that's good for you, but now let's just, let's loosen up the rules. Let's not make it about rules. Let's make it about personal satisfaction. Okay, so yeah, that's good for you. You found it that way, but don't put that on anybody else. Each person could find their own thing. Or their stories are doubted. Um, In a conversation, uh, Sean McDowell, who was, was speaking yesterday, he had with a progressive Christian, they both told stories. The progressive Christian told the story about the man who found total satisfaction in same-sex relationships in a progressive Christian community. And Sean told stories about numerous people he'd known who talked about satisfaction in Christ when they gave up those lifestyles. And what was interesting was the response. The progressive Christian responded like he had to pick which stories to believe. And he goes, well, I have a hard time honestly believing those stories because it's storytelling is truth-making. Now me, I'm like, I believe all those stories. I just think my satisfaction does not prove the goodness and truthfulness of a thing. Now, that might not seem like a big deal to you, but it seems like a pretty significant worldview shift on this topic. Just because you're satisfied in Jesus doesn't mean it's true. Just because you're satisfied in a lifestyle that the Bible seems to say is incorrect doesn't make it a good lifestyle. There are other measures of truth beyond this. I'm trying to hold that consistently. 